is lichen a symbiosis between fungi, cyanobacteria, and algae? Or is it more accurate to say that when it comes to lichen, fungi have learned to farm cyanobacteria and algae? Or should we say that when it comes to lichen, algae and cyanobacteria have learned to use fungi for shelter? The answer to all of the above is yes. Of course, I cannot say this for certain, but over and over again, when we look at nature and how its many species have evolved to coexist, we do not see the highly anthropocentric vision of Darwin where every species is perpetually at war with every other species, a sad reality where only the strong survive. Rather, we see a realm where the most adaptive survive. And, contrary to how we humans often perceive things, the creatures of nature have learned that coexistence is mutually beneficial. And lichen is perhaps one of the best examples of that mutually beneficial coexistence. Today on MicroStory, I'm going to show you that coexistence in action by peering inside one of the more successful genera of lichens, the Usnea genus, sometimes known as Old Man's Beard a hair-like growth often seen dangling from trees. Here I've placed a snippet of Old Man's Beard under the objective of a parallel microscope. And looking at it closely, we can already begin to see the marvelous symbiosis that is common to all lichens. The visible structure of the lichen is a pale fungus and the dark patches of green. Those are clusters of algae. And zooming in a bit closer, as here, we can see the individual algal cells. Different species of lichen, if one can truly call lichen a species, since each lichen is an amalgamation of species, are made of or are composites of different species of fungi, algae, and cyanobacteria. In the case of the Usnea lichen, the fungi are of the division Ascomycota, while the algae are of the division Chlorophyta. They are so closely evolved to coordinate so well with one another that they live as and function as a single species. The Usnea is a relatively simple lichen. In the tropics, types of lichen can be found that are comprised of hundreds of different species. The lichens guard their secrets, and it was only recently it was discovered that they can be comprised of many different organisms. Hang on, because I'm going to take you down a road of microscopic videography showing lichens like I don't believe anyone has ever done before. Looking at Usnea once again under the parallel microscope, we see it is made of trunks with branching-like structures. Each of those trunks is remarkably fine, the thickest no bigger than a slender string. But when we cut one of those trunks into a slender cross-section, thin enough that light can pass through it while also reflecting off the top of it, we can convert the frequencies of that light to false color revealing the inner structure and arrangements of the lichen. There is an upper or outer cortex, pale white to the edges of the frame. And in the interior, there is also a pale but somewhat darker medulla. Both these sections are comprised of fungus. And glowing between the outer cortex and the medulla are the algae. Let's take a look at them in normal light. They are visible enough. In this one exceedingly thin slice of an Usnea branch, in the razor-thin sliver that is visible, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands, of individual algal cells. The semi-transparent fungus allows light to pass through reaching those algal cells. It also shields the algae from the effects of the sun, as well as dry air, and transports nutrients and water to those algae. Let's go in for a closer look. All the cells of the chlorophyta algae are tucked into the usnea, well beneath the surface. This gives the algae a safe place to live, far enough in to take advantage of the shielding benefit of the Ascomycota fungus. And in return, the algae give their excess energy to the fungi. Now perhaps it might seem strange that differing genera, fungi and algae, which aren't even part of the same kingdom of life, might come to live together so closely that they act like a single organism. But take a moment to consider the cells of every animal on the planet. Animal cells have mitochondria, and those mitochondria produce the energy that we use. Hundreds of millions of years ago, those mitochondria were separate organisms from animal cells. Long, long ago, some mitochondria was absorbed by some young animal cell, and instead of being digested, they formed a mutually beneficial arrangement, an arrangement where our cells provided them shelter 
and they provided our cells energy. And in fact, we see just such an arrangement evolving here among lichen. We will again switch to false color, which helps us to see the structure of fungi both beneath and above the algae, forming a kind of macrocell around the algal sources of energy. It is a beautiful example of nature learning to live together, not survival of the fittest, not the strong preying upon the weak, but each species learning to benefit from the other's strengths while sharing its own. This false color image portrays the lichen algae bond, a bond of mutual cooperation and collaboration so successful that lichens are able to create soil from bare rock and now cover 6% of the Earth's surface. Thank you for joining on this voyage of discovery into the Micro Story. The Micro Story channel is part of the Understory Network, a series of channels promoting education about natural science and the conservation of the beautiful world that surrounds us. Small but growing channels, they are made possible by our many viewers, patrons, and those persons and businesses that have helped us acquire the resources and equipment necessary to produce high quality programming. If you enjoyed today's program, please take a moment to like, and also take a moment to subscribe. It costs nothing and never will, but it sure helps. And keep watch here and on our sister channels for future episodes.